Those are flying mountain goats. They're blindfolded, so they probably have no idea they're being airlifted to a new home. That's because they're not supposed to be here in Washington's Olympic National Park. But instead of killing this invasive species, the state has been moving them over 70 miles away to their native habitat in the North Cascades. In the 1920s, hunters brought 12 mountain goats from Alaska and British Columbia to the Olympic Peninsula for recreation. Their numbers quickly rose to over 700, which was a problem because not only did they destroy rare native plants, cause soil erosion, and threaten other animals in the park, such as endemic rodents, but the goats can be very hostile towards humans. Since the park doesn't have the natural salt deposits that goats need, they aggressively seek out human urine and sweat, and this never ends well. One person was attacked and killed by an aggressive goat in 2010. The North Cascades, which used to have more goats, does provide the necessary salt licks. Aside from it being their native habitat, the Cascades offers more local flora and space to roam. So airlifting a bunch of goats from one mountain range to another is a huge win-win for conservation. While Olympic Park achieves goat-free status, the Cascades has finally gotten the goats they need after years of overhunting and a dwindling population. I am in awe of goats. I've been watching goats for many, many years. Researchers have been trying to recover the Cascades mountain goat population to restore balance in the ecosystem. It's really important to kind of recover those and connect up those subpopulations of goats so that they can be more adaptable and resilient to the changing climate. By bringing the Olympic goats with the Olympic genes and having them interbreed will then ultimately increase the genetic diversity of the Cascades population. And, you know, following ecological and genetic theory, that will then also increase the resiliency of that Cascade population because it gives them more genetic tools to cope with the variations in the environment that we're going to encounter. Which leaves no choice but to bring in the choppers. That's why airlifting goats seems to be the best approach. What would you do with a 300-pound mountain goat? Hike for four days with a, uh, yeah, there's just, if you just think about it, there's really no other, there's no other way to do it. The process requires a super skilled capture team, also known as muggers. They scan the tricky terrain by helicopter and snipe the goats with tranquilizer darts or net guns that instantly sedate them. Then one mugger jumps out and wrestles the goat into a blindfold and a specially made goat sling before latching the load onto a goat daisy chain. You know, their target for the dart is pretty small, so you have to be a really good shot. They're transported to a staging area for a health exam before being moved by refrigerated truck to the Cascades, where they are then released. The capture team removed a total of 412 goats from Olympic Park. 325 were released in the Cascades, 16 were transferred to zoos, and 22 died during capture. But it got harder and more dangerous to remove the remaining goats as they learned to avoid the muggers and their relocation efforts. It's not safe for both either goats or people to do capture and translocation anymore. So we have switched to the lethal removal phase of the operation. The couple hundred remaining goats in Olympic are now being removed by aerial sharpshooters, while those in the Cascades will be closely monitored as the population bounces back, reviving the ecosystem. All the adults that are being monitored, their movements, their survival, when they're hooking up with each other. We're building a better and, and bigger population over there. 